Hello and welcome to this episode. Today we're going to talk about a subject that's very... It's, it's more common than people want to admit. But it's something that's very prevalent in the ME community and that is suicide. I believe it was last week there was a lady she developed long COVID and she actually qualified under the assisted suicide program because of this and she took her life You know, one of the reasons why our lifespan, people with ME, CFS, people with neurotoxic encephalopathy, have such a low lifespan average, isn't because we die of the condition, it's because we die from suicide in many cases. I, I don't... You know, I never want to pass judgment on people because I don't think that's fair. I don't know why people do what they do. But for people that know my backstory a little bit, um, I've been sick since, since 2006 from the nerve agent exposure. And several years later in 2017, as the damage progressed, I developed a variant of Guillain-Barre syndrome called acute motor axon neuropathy. And I would become fully paralyzed. The only thing I could do was move my mouth and, and see, move my eyes. I, I couldn't move my head or anything below. I mean, I could feel sensation. So when they touched me, I could feel it. But I could not physically move anything. So as this started to unfold at like 2.15 in the morning, um, I'm on the bed and my head falls over to the side and it starts to cut my airway off. So my wife's having to actually hold my head up so I don't choke to death. As the ambulance and EMTs and highway patrol and stuff started showing up, it's the most surreal feeling to be paralyzed. I mean, truly paralyzed. And I remember looking at my wife. I had tears coming down my eyes. My kids are in the other room being held back by the high, by, by law enforcement because they needed to get me out because time was of the essence here. And I remember looking at my wife and saying, I can't live like this. You know, I remember, you know, for the first time I truly understood why somebody would choose this course luckily I was able to regain about 80 percent function I still have pretty severe residual damage from it all took about six months um, and I have seizures as a result of it and I had seizures before now I have a different type of seizure um, but I'm seeing a lot of people in these ME ME groups, these ME Facebook groups talking about suicide. You 
you know, there's a lot of, there's the Emmy Memorial page and so many of these people didn't die from natural causes. They died from surrendering. I, I don't, you know, so many people give up. So many people they believe tomorrow doesn't matter. You know, that's that's a scary, that's a very scary time for people. When tomorrow doesn't matter, that's when things really can escalate for a person. What I've always in my life tried to do is have a purpose for tomorrow. And as a result, I don't have that reason for not existing tomorrow by always having a project always having a purpose for tomorrow I always have a reason to be there tomorrow when we remain stationary when we remain laying in bed dwelling on how unfair our situation is the depression, the anxiety, the post-traumatic stress disorder. Can run away with us. And for many people. It results in them ending their life. I hope people who are in this situation really I don't know this isn't going to be a real positive video I'm afraid it just I appreciate what you're you're going through I I just You know, so many people will tell you mindset is not a factor in any of this. Mindset doesn't play a role in, in helping us overcome the situation, the challenge we find ourselves in. Folks, mindset is, is so important. And when you have a depressed person sharing with a depressed person, I'm not sure you're finding the best answers for you. There's a lot of people who are the face of this condition who are depressed individuals giving depressed points of view. I don't do that. I don't think that's useful. The drugs that so many people are taking, the vapes that so many people are taking, the energy drinks that people are taking, the, the pharmaceuticals that people are taking, they are just wrecking havoc on our, on our system. They're wrecking havoc on our mental health. They're wrecking havoc on, they're wrecking havoc on our basic functions in life. You know, one of the most amazing things in the world is just, you know, when, when I see people and people on these, in this ME CFS groups talk about never going outside. They never 
experience fresh air. They never experience the sun. They never experience any of that stuff. One of the best things in the world you can do is, is just get outside. There's something so magical about feeling the wind on your face and, and the rain and the in the sun and you know I, I believe that we are you know we're all connected to the earth I mean we, we come from the earth we're, we're, we return to the earth we're part of the earth and You know, the other day I was, I went down to the mailbox and I hadn't been mowing the lawn for a while and the pulley tensioner thing came off. So my wife and I, we live on a farm and our mailbox is about a quarter of a mile away. So I went down to the mailbox and while I was there, there were two, two or three baby raccoons that were scurrying away from our mailbox into this old tree. It was a neat thing to see because It was just a really neat thing to see. I mean, they were just right, they were so close. And I remember I just sat at the mailbox for a little bit and just watched them. They had their heads hidden behind the tree, believing I couldn't see them, but I could see their tails sitting there. Or, do, you know, dogs do that sometimes. They'll hide their face and think you can't see their body. <laughs> but these little raccoons did that, and... You know, the weather was really somewhat pleasant outside and you know, it's little things like that 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 can really make a big difference in somebody's life. The other day I was we have a garden area that I haven't been able to really do much with this year and so it's overgrown and there was another raccoon that went from that went scurrying out from one of the apple trees to where our well house is and um it kind of caught me off guard i wasn't expecting it you know i've owned this property since 2009 and during that time i've really not i know we have raccoons everywhere but ironically in two days, I saw raccoons right by our house, or, you know, within reason of our house. And I never would have seen them if I would have stayed inside. We had a squirrel come up. I understand we live in a farm, so, you know, it's not like we're in a city where there's squirrels in the trees. And so the squirrel just came out of you know, we don't expect to see a squirrel there. <laughs> and there was a squirrel sitting at our, sitting basically outside my office or on this side of the wall. I have a little fish area right behind me. I don't know if you can hear a pump sometimes. I have an air pump in my office that runs my fish tank. I have a 500 gallon um, outside fish thing. And so, in between doing videos and other stupid things I do. I, I go outside and I just like to, I just like to experience the outside. It, it makes things so different. If I was cooped up all the time, I don't think I would have the same 
outlook on things, the same mindset, the same positivity. The ME community has a tendency to embrace suicide as justification. They won't embrace change in mindset as a way to approach the challenge, but they will approach, they will accept suicide as an alternative, if that makes any sense at all. I think so many people have, have ended their life prematurely. because they they followed the advice of people who themselves are in the same situation they are. I'm not in your situation. And the reason for that is I've chosen not to be. You know, mindset is a powerful tool that we can use to overcome the challenges that we face it doesn't mean it's going to make us better. It doesn't mean it's going to heal us. But it's going to make tomorrow matter in our life. Don't dwell on what you've lost. Be grateful that you're alive. Be grateful that you maybe have children that you can still hug. You know, maybe you have grandchildren that you can, you can't do much with them, but you can be there for them. You know, I walked my daughter down the aisle for her wedding last year, and I'm, like I said, I'm partially paralyzed. And it was quite a spectacle because everybody's like, is he going to trip? Is he going to fall? And because I walked. And as I was walking my daughter down the aisle, her and I were nitpicking with each other. We were teasing each other. And I'm like, so who's going to trip who into the, are you going to go into this side or am I going to go on to this side? Because the way I walk, I, I kind of, I kind of, shuttle myself in a way but I was afraid I was going to trip I was going to step on her dress and trip her I know so many people they talk about not being able to attend their children's wedding or weddings and you know sporting events and you know events that your grandkids are part of and I get that I, I truly do but man When I talk with Asperger people, and I have another group that I work with, and I, I work with Asperger and Tourette Syndrome people, and you know, I always try to talk to them about the same thing, is because suicide is very high in those organizations as well. You know, tomorrow matters, and the world is better off with you in it. Even though the world may not know you exist, there are people in your life who know you exist. Be a person whose brain finds a way to stay useful in life. Don't complain, don't whine. Stay positive as best you can. Find, identify the challenges and then find your way to overcome the challenge. You know, I had to learn to walk and I'm paralyzed. I've had to learn to overcome a lot of things. And you can too. Don't be part of this 
Emmy Memorial page prematurely. Outlast this condition. Find your fight. And you do that by finding your purpose in life. Get outside. Go find a squirrel, go find a couple of raccoons. Life's good. But it's hard to see when we're succumbing to the medications, the drugs, the influences of negativity. Until next time, please be careful. Be smart. Pay attention. Thank you for your time.